Get ready for the dictation. Start. Globalization has resulted in the widening and deepening of systematic interdependencies amongst nations and that's why today no country in the world can afford to ignore the basic tenets of international law. Globalization cannot be divorced from rapid advancements in the field of technology and communication which in turn has led to shrinking of the global space. However, the idol of just world order will not be realized without adherence to international rule of law. This goal necessitates finding common approach to counter problems of terrorism, human rights, environmental degradation, international trade and utilization of natural resources beyond national jurisdictions. Thus, in the 21st century, the importance of international law has increased manifolds. No state can shield itself from the rest of the world, whether it be in the matter of foreign relations, trade, environment, communications, ecology or finance. The sovereign states are actively participating in international negotiations for framing of treaties at international, regional and sub-regional levels. Fortunately, India plays a pivotal role in the treaty making process and ensuring that the concerns of poor and developing nations are protected. The Western hegemony in development and codification of international law is gradually diminishing and such developments owed much to the active participation of the states from Asia, Africa and other continents. India has been an ardent supporter of the United Nations since the inception of this institution and places tremendous faith in it. The assertion of Eurocentricity of international law by Western scholars has become commonplace in academic narratives. However, in reality, the roots of international law can be traced far back in ancient India and also in other ancient civilizations. Respect for the dignity of an individual and striving for peace and harmony in society has been an abiding factor in Indian culture. The Indian culture has been the product of assimilation of diverse cultures and religions. The spirit of unity and universality in our tradition extends to the whole world. It is said in the Rig Veda, there is one race of human beings and the validity of different traditions, religions, indeed of paths to truth has always been respected. Our guiding principle has been Sarva Dharma Samman. In ancient India, there were elaborate provisions for social services such as education, public health, insurance against unemployment, old age, widowhood, orphanage and elimination of poverty. It is believed that it was necessary for the king representing the state and its resources to encourage learning to care for the blind, the decrepit, the old 
and the widowed and to give employment to those who were unemployed the indian constitution provides certain rights for individuals in part 3rd of the constitution which are known as the fundamental rights the word fundamental means that these rights are inherent in all the human beings and essential for the individual these rights represent the basic value of a civilized society and the constitution makers declared that they should be accorded high place in the constitution these rights are aimed at protecting the dignity of the individual and creating conditions in which every human being can develop his personality to the fullest possible extent no law ordinance custom usage or administrative order can abridge or take away one's fundamental rights such is the degree of entrenchment of fundamental rights in the constitution of india moreover it has now become a settled position in india that these fundamental rights conferred by the constitution of india can't be waived by the individuals the constitution of india lays down clearly the basis on which foreign policy should be framed and respected the basic thrust of article 51 is to maintain international peace and security international relations and international obligations matters which under the indian constitution fall exclusively within the domain of the union under the constitution the constituent units of the indian union do not enjoy any international standing although this article falls in part 4 of the constitution which is non justiciable nonetheless it occupies an important position in the determination of foreign policy in india stop